This is a brief video podcast series in which we are looking at the paths taken by the various cranial nerves 1 through 12 as they exit the cranial vault and enter into different regions of the head and neck and other regions of the body. In the previous segment, we looked at cranial nerves 1 through 6, but we omitted 5. We're going to now return to 5 and look specifically at it in detail. In this plastic model, we can see cranial nerve 5, represented by the number 32, and here it branches into its three separate branches. The ophthalmic branch, cranial nerve V1, the orbital, or sorry, the maxillary branch, cranial nerve V2, and the mandibular branch, cranial nerve V3. Starting with the ophthalmic branch, we can see it enter through the superior orbital fissure along with cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6 that were previously discussed. Here the ophthalmic branch continues to the front as the frontal nerve branch, which will then branch into the supratrochlear and supraorbital nerve branches that are seen here. In addition, we have a lacrimal branch coming off of V1, which will go to the lateral side, and we'll be able to supply the lacrimal gland. You would also have a nasociliary branch located a little bit further in. Some of the branches going to the posterior aspect of the eye, but other branches that we cannot see, which would continue to the <coughs> medial aspect of the orbit to pierce through the ethmoid bone. Picking it up with cranial nerve V2 now, this is your maxillary branch shown by 36. So this is going to exit through the foramen rotundum of the skull. And this is where it will enter into the pterygopalatine fossa seen here and continue through the infraorbital tunnel as the infraorbital nerve to emerge anteriorly as, once again, the infraorbital nerve that will um, supply a large portion of the face. I should also mention, off of the nasociliary from V1, I did not mention this earlier, but this would be the continuation of the nasociliary nerve, which would supply the bridge of the nose. Down here we have V3. V3 would be exiting through the foramen ovale to enter the infratemporal fossa. From here, we can see it give off the auriculotemporal branch, which would then come up just anterior to the ear to supply sensation to the skin in this region. We can see the infra, or sorry, the inferior alveolar nerve that would run through the mandibular foramen to supply the inferior margin of the teeth and then continue as the mental nerve. And here we have the buccal branch, sorry, right here, that would be supplying the mucosa on the inside of the cheek so that when you bite your cheek, this is what detects the pain. And finally, the lingual nerve, which will continue down to the base of the tongue. We can see these as well on additional model with a bit further detail. So in this model, once again, you have your ophthalmic branch running through the superior orbital fissure, branching into the supraorbital and supratrochlear branches. This shows a bit more of the nasociliary nerve and continuing, including the um, infratrochlear nerve, as well as the nasal branch, which will supply the bridge of the nose. And this on this side would represent the lacrimal branch, which would be supplying the lacrimal gland, which would be located in this region. Below it, we see the continuation of the maxillary nerve, V2. This is where it is associated with 
the infraorbital canal, most of it broken away so that the orbit here in this model is continuous with the maxillary sinus. But here you can very see, clearly see it continuing as the infraorbital nerve exiting through this foramina just inferior to the orbit. This also allows us to identify some of the superior alveolar branches which come off of V2 to supply the top of the teeth. I did not mention the previous model, but these were also located where you can see them here. Superior alveolar nerves, posterior, middle, anterior, not as well shown. In this model here, we can see part of that anterior, um, superior alveolar nerve branches that come down to supply the incisors of the teeth. And then V3, once again, we can see with this model, here's where it would exit. This would be the inferior alveolar nerve going through the mandibular foramen, auriculotemporal nerve coming up anterior to the external acoustic meatus, wrapping around the middle meningeal artery, and then once again the lingual nerve, which we can see from this model, continuing down to the base of the tongue. In addition, for the fifth cranial nerve, we can see these in a schematic representation using a dry skull. This would represent the aggregated trigeminal nerve. We can see the ophthalmic branch coming off, running through, superior orbital fissure. We could continue to pick it up here as the frontal nerve, which would ultimately show the supraorbital. You would also have a supratrochlear branch coming off here. The lacrimal nerve also coming off and not shown in this representation, but in the middle would be the location of the nasociliary nerve and the branches that would then penetrate through the ethmoid and would continue to the superior portion of the external nasal region. V2, maxillary located here running through foramen rotundum. We can then pick it up once again in the pterygopalatine fossa and the infraorbital branch continuing along through the infraorbital canal to the front of the face. We also here see a zygomatic branch, which would also be coming off of V2. Not shown in the other samples would be the greater and lesser palatine nerves that uh, would be running down and would enter the roof of the mouth through the greater and lesser palatine foramina to supply the hard and the soft palate, respectively. V3, mandibular branch running through the foramen ovale. We continue the path into the infratemporal fossa the mandibles out of the way, but this would be your inferior alveolar nerve here, and this would represent the lingual nerve.